Judy Garland was no more than 16 years old when she starred in the film The Wizard of Oz and sang for us this wonderful Harold Arlen classic, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And today, you are going to learn how to play this on your cello. We begin with the bowing. Look at the second measure. We have a legato, and then the second legato, the 3-4, has a little dash below it. That calls for a slight separation. You will see the same motif happen in measure 7 and also 19. It's a slight stop, and that's how you play that. And to make variants, you can play it smooth the first time and detaché the second time. And then do it detaché. The largest challenge for the bow happens in measure 10, 11, and also in measure 14 and 15, with these string crossings from the D and A, the second and first string. If you look at your elbow, you should have a motion back and forth, but there's no motion coming from the shoulder. It's all here isolated in your elbow, allowing your arm, forearm to move up and down. To succeed at this bowing, you have to have a very controlled motion. Here's a quick warm up to learn how to play that. First, begin with open strings down up. If you have isolated from the elbow, then you may continue with a legato, two notes. And then do four notes. When you're ready, you may speed it up. Last bit, you want to play this here in the midpoint section of your bow, where it's most balanced. We've talked about that before, the balance point in your bow, how quickly you can find it shows you how much you know about your bow. This point is where you have most control, so playing within this area provides you the easiest amount of movement. Moving on to the fingerings, we know that this is in D major. If you need to revise your two octave D major scale, there's a card in the top right of your screen for your convenience. Most of the time in this song, you will play in the first position. This is measure six, and you will actually move up to the lower second position for just two notes, extending back and remaining there for that extension. When we play cello, we want to prepare our technique for notes that come in the future. So in this measure, measure six, we'd have no absolute need to play the F sharp and G natural with three, four. Yet, if we continue forward, we see a one and a plus four string cross. In order to maintain that nice in our intonation, we want to set up our hand prior to measure seven. That is why in measure six, we play the two three, the two on the F sharp and three on the G natural. I will demonstrate for you. Another technique you must know is how to do an extension. Now, if you are new to this sort of technique, it is an extension between the first and second finger. 
there is also a card in the top right of your screen. Click on it to revise and then return to this video. Yes, you must use your extension there in measure 7. Let us move on to measure 10. It's in first position. And you're remaining your 3 on the F sharp that entire time. Measure 11, remain the 4 on the G. Here, in measure 14 and 15, instead of playing the 3 and plus 4, my counsel is to play that 3 as a 2. Shift up to lower second position, extend back, and you are ready to play. Because all you have to do is drop your 4 on the plus 4, extend back for the 1 in measure 15. Measure 16 continues in the extension with the 2 on the C sharp. And then measure 17 shifts up to the upper third position, 2 on the E, string crossover to 4 on the B natural, release for the open D in measure 18. I will play for you starting on the pickup of measure 14. My final word on playing this piece goes to your preparation for each and every note. In particular, the open strings. Look at the very first measure. You play an open string and then you go to the A string playing a 4. Measure 3, you go back to that open D. I suggest you're very gentle on your approach. Enjoy those open strings. You can make them sound beautiful if you are extra gentle as you play them. Thank you for watching my video today on how to play Somewhere Over the Rainbow, the Judy Garland version. If you learned something, leave a like, consider subscribing because this is something I do on a very regular basis, getting a slow start to 2019, but don't worry, there are plenty of videos to come. And if you know someone who is learning on their own and really likes songs from movies on their cello, share this channel with them. I would appreciate it. Here is content that you might find more appealing and interesting for you. And I want to thank you one last time for including the Cello Coach channel on your journey of cello music discovery. All right, that's it. <laughs>